Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Outlook can also assist you in planning a meeting by sending out invitations to attendees. These are called meeting requests. The recipients of your meeting request will receive an email message in which they must click a button that indicates if they will be attending. The response that they send is then recorded and stored by Outlook. In the future, you can open the meeting request in your calendar to view their responses. To plan a meeting, open the calendar folder and then click the New Meeting button in the New Group on the Home tab in the ribbon. You can then create the meeting request using the meeting window that appears. In the meeting window, you can click the To button to open the Select Attendees and Resources dialog box. You can then use the Address Book drop-down to select the address book or calendar folder that contains the email addresses of the people that you wish to invite to the meeting. The names of the people will then appear within the large white list box. You can then select a name from the list and click one of the following buttons. Required, which means that the selected attendee is required for the meeting. Optional, which means that the selected attendee can come if they would like or resources, which is used to designate time that a specific resource is requested for use, like a particular room in your office, for example. It's important to note that the organizer of the meeting is always listed as a required attendee. You can repeat this process until you've invited all attendees and selected all resources. Note that as you add the people and resources to the list, they will be entered as email addresses that are separated by semicolons. Note that you can also click directly into the required, optional, or resources text boxes and then enter any other email addresses for individuals that you would like to invite that are not stored in your address books if needed. Simply make sure that those email addresses that you enter are separated by semicolons within the text box. Then click the OK button when you're finished inviting the meeting attendees to return to the meeting window. In the meeting window, you will need to type a short description of the meeting into the subject text box, and then enter a location for the meeting into the location text box. To select a start date and a start time for the meeting, you can click the drop down arrow to the right of the start time text box and select a date from the calendar displayed. You can then click the drop down arrow to the right of the date and select a start time for the meeting. Repeat the same process to set the end time as well. Now when setting meeting times, make sure that the attendees that you have invited aren't busy during the time selected. You can see how they have marked that time within their calendars for the meeting time that you have selected by clicking the scheduling button that appears in the show group on the meeting tab in the ribbon. That will then display the calendars of the selected attendees. And while you cannot actually see what they are doing, you can see how they indicate the time within their calendars. The legend used to interpret the colored values is displayed at the bottom of this view. So if they are busy, you should try and find the first free time available for the selected attendees. One way to do that is to click the Auto Pick Next button that appears at the bottom of this window. Outlook will then try to select the next available free period of the duration specified in which all attendees will be available. You can then return to the default view of this window by clicking the Appointment button in the Show group on the Home tab in the ribbon. At this point, you only need to click the Send button in the Meeting window to send the meeting requests to the selected recipients. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.